number 42 sing them over again to me wonderful words of life let me more of their beauty see wonderful words of life words of life and beauty teach me faith and duty Christ the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of life sinner listening to the loving call wonderful words of life also freely given wooing us to heaven Sweet, sweetly echo the gospel call wonderful words of life offer pardon and peace to all wonderful words of life Jesus only Savior sanctify forever our dear Savior will come someday wonderful words of life Come to rapture his bride away, wonderful ways of life. Glory, glory, glory. Shout the wondrous story. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful ways of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful ways of life. <laughs> Wonderful 
Let us round off our prayers now. Amen. We thank you, precious Lord, for who you are. You are the rock. Your work is perfect. And all your ways are justice and judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right at thou. And we take pleasure in that truth. Blessed truth it is. Lord, we thank you because the Lord Jesus Christ informed very clearly in that day of his longish prayer in John's Gospel chapter 17 in verse 25 he has claimed O righteous Father after that he has considered many many things who can say otherwise he had said no one had been to heaven and then came down to earth to tell us but it is he who is in the bosom of the father. He is the one that declared him. And so Lord we agree with him entirely. That thou art the righteous one. At another time somebody confronted him and said. Good master. Seeing him as a teacher. A good man. And giving him the absolute title of goodness. And Jesus Christ faulted him and said, Why callest thou me good? There is no person that is absolutely good, save God and him alone. Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you because we have been told in the word of the Lord, and I quote, Likewise also the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us. For the sins with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. And in parenthesis, and he answereth our prayers. Because the Spirit maketh intercession for the sins. According to the will of God. Lord, I come here. Not by might and not by power. You have said, I will show mercy unto whom I will show mercy. And I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. Meaning that compassion belongs to you. And if you have elected to show it to somebody, you just show compassion fully. And nobody can question you as to what you do with what, own, what you own. And then therefore you said, it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. And unto Zerubbabel he said, What's that mountain? What that obstacle that is on your way it shall become a plain. And thou shalt take the headstone of that plain, that mountain, shouting grace, grace to it. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profits nothing. Father in glory, it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. This Morning, Grandfather in heaven, as we go into this uh, talk, talk, this very important and crucial message of the hour, Lord, I pray that words will come out, words that have particles of the Spirit of God, and let them develop wings, and let them fly into the hearts of men and women, and let them cause regeneration. And let them cause our proper decisions. And let them uh, sanctify. And let them remove people from errors. And let them make them to stand on the rock. Precious master. And let, them make, let it make them to leave the vagaries of this life. And follow the real thing. For the time is consummated. Grandfather in heaven. I thank you because I do not need to shout. I do not need to scream. I do not need to talk much. 
The word of the Lord is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edges sword. Piercing through to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows. And is the discerner of the intents and the thoughts of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in your sight. But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That is with whom whom shall give account. Precious master. Have your way now. Let the spirit have his way. Blessed Trinity one God. Have your way. In the day of Jesus. He made this declaration. The words I speak, I speak not of myself. But I speak the words according to the spirit of God. And the things that I do, I'm not the person doing them. The father that dwelleth in me, he speaketh the words and doeth the works. May it be so this afternoon. And continually with every person that is going to attentively listen to me. And then acquire the things that should be acquired. Glory be to you forever. Thank you for answer to prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, I have prayed. And amen. It's another time of... Uh, bringing... To us, the very mind of God for this time. As was announced yesterday, the topic we are discussing is who is on the side of the Lord and on the side of his vision or project and on the side of the visioner or the project manager. It is not possible for us to take the message as a piece. If we do that, it will last six hours or more. So we're going to take them piecemeal, take it piecemeal. The first aspect of it is who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? Like I said yesterday, there is no need for any presumption. Presumption leads to failure, complete failure. If you are approaching an examination time and you are presumptuous and you are thinking that all is well, you know everything, you go with that overconfidence, you might be shocked what you see. So, pay attention. And uh, so that the word of the Lord will do you good. Remember where I read or quoted while I was praying. It says, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing through to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrows, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. I want to explain the meaning of two-edged sword. Now, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. In Revelation, Jesus Christ is coming and then he said when he is descending and coming to deal with the Antichrist and all the enemies of the Lord that will gather against the Lord, he's going to come with a sword in his mouth. But it was, it's not that there is going to be a physical sword that is going to hold in his mouth. It is his word that will slay all the people. Now the word has the capacity on the one side to give life and then on the other side to kill. That is the meaning. Two edges sword. 
And uh, what it will do to an individual is dependent on that individual's disposition. So, when you are hearing it, don't take it for, for, take it for granted. This is the truth. If you go to one of the prophets, then he was asking the people of Israel, what about your fathers that did not hearken to the word of the Lord that was preached to them? So, in this uh, message, we are going to consider the circumstance of that day when that question was asked. And then we are also going to consider the choice of the endeared and the dedicated. After that, we will consider the circumstances of our day. And then the choice of the endeared and the dedicated. That is today's endeared to God and dedicated. The circumstance of the day when the question was asked. The choice that the people that would eventually be endeared and uh, dedicated unto the Lord made. And then we look at the circumstances of today and then the choices that are available. The worst thing that can happen to an individual is to be in leadership position but does not have qualification for being in that position. And this was very, very offensive unto the Lord Jesus Christ in the day that he was dealing with uh, the Jews. Let's read from Matthew's Gospel. Chapter 23 and verse 1. Matthew 23 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and uh, to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works. For they say and do not, and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Scribes and Pharisees. They were sitting in Moses' seat. They were taking the position of Moses. Moses was a man of God who brought the word of God unto Israel and who led them. And then these people now became leaders in the course of time. And then, but they would even expand and add the unnecessary things unto the law. And then put it upon the people to observe. But they would not observe those things. What an unfortunate sect they were. And Jesus pronounced woe and woe and woe and woe and woe and woe unto such people. 
Don't let anybody deceive you. Leadership can cost somebody he heaven. If you were not a leader, then you wouldn't have gone to hell if he became just a member of the church. There are people that are in church and have died and died in sin and the Lord made me know that they shouldn't have died if they were outside the church because all the sinners in the world have not died. They remained in the church and they were sinning and so they died. That's what God made me know. And he mentioned one person. So, as you are hearing these remarks, you be please pay great attention. The circumstance of that day that made this man of God to now stand in the gate and then said and screamed who is on the Lord's side let him come over to me Exodus chapter 32 Exodus chapter 32 we are reading from verse 1 and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, idols, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. We do not know what has happened to him. He has been too long in the mountain. And so we don't know what has happened to him. And Aaron said unto them, Break up the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives and your sons, of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron, and he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graven tool after he had made it a molten calf, and they said, This be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, the height of stupidity, the height of foolishness, the height of what I cannot explain. Verse 5, And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. The Lord there is capital letter. So they have re they replaced that Lord that brought them out from Egypt, whose signs and wonders they saw, with this thing that they made out of the earrings of their daughters and their sons and their wives. And then he became the Lord. And then there was now a proclamation of a feast. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings. And brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. That is to dance to the music of their rejoicing, of their, of their merriment. Verse 7, And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee down. For thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed their own to and said, This be thy God, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen these people. And behold, it's a stiff-necked people that is stubborn people. Now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and I may consume them, that is, destroy them. And I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord 
pleaded with the Lord, his God, and said, Lord, why doth your wrath wax hot against thy people? Which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say for mischief? Did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent. Of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And of this land, all this land that I have spoken of, will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented him that is relented from the harm he wanted to do. Verse 15, And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. And the tables were written on both sides. On the one side and on the other, they were they written. And the tables were the work of God, the, hand, the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he, Moses said, is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but a noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass as soon as they came nigh to the camp, that they saw the calf and the dancing and the bowing down. And Moses' anger was hot. And he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it. Scattered it upon the water and made the children of Israel to drink of it. And Moses said to Aaron, What did this people what did this people unto thee? And thou hast brought so great a sin upon them. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord was hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we what not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever had any good, let them break it off. So they gave it me, and I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. That was magic. It was not the person that fashioned it or commanded the people that fashioned it. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then... Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from the gate to gate, throughout the camp. And slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Israel, uh, uh, Levi, did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that there about 3,000 men. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. Now this is the story. Now look up to me. The story is very clear. The abomination has taken place. Because Moses was long in coming down. And the people now began to devise an evil device. The delay of Moses in coming down shouldn't bother any person because they know that he surely would come down 
and then at the appropriate time they have seen much they have seen what God did in Egypt before they were released they saw all that they saw what happened when they came to the Red Sea what God did and what has happened so far even in the wilderness and how the water came out and all that and remember that at a point in time I think in chapter 19 God came down on the mount and the mount was on a smoke and then thunderings and lightnings and earthquake and then they said we do not want to hear so God had made himself so manifest but these people forgot the something in a twinkling of an eye because of the delay and went and then made them gods of their earrings and necklaces what an abomination that made all the people to be rejected by the Lord the entirety of the people rejected by the Lord only Moses was accepted and Joshua his servant who went with him and God was willing to now wipe them out send a pestilence and all Israel would be dead no one man excepting Moses and Joshua possibly and he said out of thee I raise a nation and Moses pleaded that he should not do that what an abomination that led to this question this decision time and then when Moses saw it now he said he moved to the gate of the camp and then all Israel were in their camps and then he stood there and screamed who among you is on the lost side who wants to be repentant who wants to come over now and say this thing that we did is a great abomination we want the Lord's mercy. We want the Lord's forgiveness. And as he said that, the sons of Levi, the people of the, of the tribe of Levi, rushed to him. Others did not. Wash, think, pause, sila. An opportunity was given for repentance or restitution in order that deliverance in order that forgiveness will be granted and then people despite the abomination did not respond accepting a segment and then this segment rushed to Moses and then the anger of the Lord and the holy justice of the Lord came upon him and he told them take your swords and then go into the midst of the people kill, your kill every man that is on their way and uh, you know the thousands that died the people that did not run fast all of them were killed by the age of the sword that was the circumstance And then, even in that circumstance, we see the choice of the people that became endeared, endeared to the Lord, their God, and then became dedicated sons of Levi. It was that their action that now yielded what they became in Israel in the course of time. Let's go and read.
But before we go to that, before we go to read uh, uh, what happened to the Levites for their response, we need to see some similar uh, circumstance that occurred in the course of time, even in the Old Testament at the time of Joshua. There was a time that Joshua made this kind of uh, this kind of call, this kind of uh, uh, this kind of exclamation, this kind of uh, uh, call on the people. Take 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 your time. Choose you this day, whom you may serve. Now let's read in Joshua chapter twenty. Joshua chapter twenty four. I'm reading from verse 1. And Joshua child all the tribes of Israel to Shechem gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and they presented themselves before God and Joshua said unto all the people thus said the Lord God of Israel your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood that is the Euphrates river and old time in old time even Terah the father of Abraham and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the floor, that is, river Euphrates, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I sent Moses also and Aaron and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterward I brought you out. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt and you came unto this sea. And the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them and your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt and ye dwell in the wilderness a long season and I brought you into the land of the Amorites uh, which dwelt on the other side Jordan and they fought with you and I gave them into your hand and that you might possess their land and I destroyed them before you then Balak the son of Zippor king of Moab arose and wanted a word against Israel and sent and called Balaam and the son of Boa uh, to curse you but I would not hearken unto Balaam therefore he blessed you still instead so I delivered you out of his hand and he went over Jordan and came unto Jericho and the men of Jericho fought against you and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Gigashites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and I delivered them into your hand and I sent the honored before you could drive them out from before you even the two kings of the Amorites but not with thy sword nor with thy bow and I have given you a land for which you did not labor and the cities which you built not and ye dwell in them of the vineyards of of, and, of, and oliviers which you planted not do you eat now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood that is the Euphrates river from where he took Abraham and in Egypt 
and serve you the Lord, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This was another solemn time that this man rehearsed all the handiwork of the Lord unto these people from the calling of Abraham from all of the Chaldees, now unto that present time. And now he showed all the things that the Lord did and then now requested that they should make their choice. In other words, who still wants to be on the side of the Lord, seeing that he has not done us any evil. And then the people chorus that we are on the side of the Lord. We are on the side of the Lord. And then he said, okay, it looks like he was even doubtful that they were going to be on the side of the Lord. The people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other God. That is in verse 16. For the Lord our God, he is, he it is that brought us up, brought up, brought, brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, which he did, well, which, and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went among all the people through whom we passed and the Lord drove out from before us all the people even the Amorites quit dwelt in the land therefore will we also serve the Lord for he is our God and Joshua said unto the people you cannot serve the Lord for he is a holy God he is a jealous God and will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins if you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after that he had done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourself that ye have chosen you to serve the Lord, to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away a strange, uh, said he, the strange gods which are among you. And incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Moses and Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak. That was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us. For it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest he deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart every man unto his inheritance. And it came to pass after this thing that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord died being a hundred and ten years old, and they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Sarah, which is in Mount Ephraim on the north side of the hill of Gash. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. Here we see a solemn assembly and a rehearsal of the goodness of the Lord and then a request for choice to be made. And these people made a good choice. And he said, if you have made a good choice, now take away everything that is sinful. Everything that will not be in consonance with the decision that we are making. Everything that is not acceptable to the Lord. Every practice. Take it out of your, out of your lives, out of your houses, and out of your programs. And the people did. And there is this testimony 
that they made a good choice. And then uh, throughout the time of uh, Joshua, that the people served the Lord. Now, we have seen the time of uh, this man called Moses. What he did and how a segment of the people now ran to him. You know what? Now, time will fail me to go from scripture to scripture to show you that it was because of that action of the Levites that they were chosen to be the priests. The people that were uh, be come in contact with the sanctuary that we carry it, that we set it up. In fact, it was because of that action that they became co-owners of Israel with God. And uh, they took the tithes from the people. The tithes the people paid, the ten part went to the, went to the Levites. And they were the priests and they were the sanctuary workers and they were everything. Are you following me? Aaron was the chief priest and then his descendants. If you want to know more about that, just go to Concordance and check the Levites. So you will see all the things that are, that are mentioned that are too numerous, the privileges of the Levites. Remember in Hebrew that they talked about the Levites, how that they paid the tithe in Abraham. How that Abraham paid, that is, as Abraham gave a, a tithe unto Melchizedek, he said that uh, um, the Levi was even in the bosom of, in the, in the bowels of Abraham and, and, uh, and then, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then paid, uh, paid, uh, received the tithe, something like that. Now, you see that it was as a result of that great choice they made. No other tribe would come near to the sanctuary, to be a priest, to burn incense, to do this or to do that because of the decision they made. They became endeared unto the Lord. Now, at the time of Jesus Christ, there was another occasion that he now made a call. He now said, who is on my side? Who is on my side? In John's Gospel, chapter 6, John chapter 6 The Lord Jesus has spoken severally On the bread of life Saying that he was the bread of life That came from heaven And said that if anybody did not eat that bread He would not have life in him but you know that he was not talking about eating his physical flesh and then drawing with a syringe his blood to drink. He was talking about himself being the word of God personified. And the word of God is the bread of life. Remember that man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And he stretched it. The people did not understand it. They were questioning it. They were asking whether he was introducing, introducing them to cannibalism. And then he continued to talk about it this way and that way. And made it become difficult. Listen to me. It is usually the way of God. When somebody is questioning a truth that is being explained. That is, as I'm preaching now, as I'm showing you what the Lord wants us to do, and the life 
wanting to draw from the things that happened in times past and then put them side by side with the things that are happening today and wanting a choice to be made and somebody will fail not to understand but the person understands he wants to confuse himself he wants to bring this argument and bring the other argument now what the Lord does in that circumstance is to help confuse the person Remember that in Matthew chapter 13 when he was giving out the parables now his disciples came asking him why are you speaking to them in parables? He said yeah I'm speaking to them in parables because to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God to them it's not given because the prophet has said that they will hear but they will not hear their eyes will be open, but they will not want to see. And so, since they chose to see and not see, and hear, but not hear. Now I speak to them, I speak to them in parable that they might become more confused. Don't you know that God gives people rep reprobate mind? That is a mind that, that, that doesn't, uh, that is that the person you are talking and the person is uh, shrugging shoulder, he doesn't want to hear until a point in time God will help the person give him a reprobate mind so that whatsoever you say in this world, whatsoever miracle you do means nothing. So that he can be damned. Have you not known how that Jesus Christ helped Satan to enter Judas? Have you not known that? That Jesus Christ helped Satan to enter Judas. He had been talking and talking and talking and talking. And speaking about many, many things. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. Beware of covetousness. But Judas was bent on the money that was in the bag. He was the treasurer. His whole life was given to it. And Jesus was warning and warning and warning and talking. One of you is a devil. One of you is, a, is not my child. Now, meaning what? Wanted him to think twice. It is me that he's referring to. It is me that he's referring to. But it didn't bother him. It didn't just bother him. At a point in time, the Lord now said, that thing that you wanted to do, do it now. And then he, he, put the, he put the muscle of meal into the soup and then gave him to eat. And then as he ate it, the Bible says, Satan entered him. So, as we are going through these things, that a situation arose in the lives of the people that followed God. And then there was an abomination. And the abomination was so great. And now the head of the people now said, went and moved to the gate of the camp and stood there and shouted and screamed, who is on the Lord's side? Obviously, some people were thinking that it was a joking thing until the sons of Levi rushed to him. Now we see the case of Jesus. Look at what happened. At the end of the day. Now as he continued talking. Now verse 60 in John's gospel chapter 6 says. Many therefore of his disciples when they had had this said. This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? In other words they were saying this is a difficult saying who can understand it when Jesus knew in himself that the disciples murmured at it the meaning of murmuring there is grumbled at what is said he said unto them does this offend you what and if ye shall see the son of man ascend up where he was before it is a spirit that quickened, gives life. 
the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning whom they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore, and, and he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went away. That is, went back. That is, went away and walked no more with him. Now said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you go away? Who is on my side? Who wants to go away now? Who, who, who wants to do the right thing or the wrong thing? The people are bolted away. Do you want to join them in bolting away? This is the time of decision. Now this time it was that the fact is that he said... He dished out difficult things to follow, to understand. At the time of Moses, it was because of abomination in the house of God. At the time of Joshua, it was a rehearsal of all the things that God had done. Now that brought the question. And people took decisions. Now, hear what happened. Verse 68, then Simon Peter answered for the, for the rest, Lord, to whom shall I go? He answered, for who? For the rest, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and I believe, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And all the people said, Amen. And all that people said that we agree with him. And so they continued with him. It was a time of decision. And then the other person that refused, you know what happened unto him. All the rest of the people made it through to heaven. All the rest of the people made it through to the fulfillment of their ministries. Even when after Jesus had died and risen from the dead, and uh, they were afraid because, listen to me, because uh, while the Lord Jesus Christ was with them, they were not baptized with the Holy Spirit. If you read in John chapter 7, 7 and verse 37 downwards, you saw that he was talking about, if anybody thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit was not yet given because Jesus Christ had not been glorified. And now these people were afraid. When he had died, and then they will they stay in the room, and because of the fear of the Jews. But when they received the Holy Spirit, now they became emboldened and challenged the Jews, and challenged the Sanhedrin, and challenged the elders, and did marvelous things until they all fulfilled their ministry because they took their time even to take the appropriate decision at the appropriate time. The appropriate decision. Who is on the Lord's side? Now, that now brings me to the circumstances of our day. 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 Our day where you don't have the testimonies like the one that Samuel had. Where such testimonies are lacking. That same pastor. I've already told you that all those things that we are doing, we are reshuffling our house. And then we're going to piece the things in small, small pieces and give to people according to their abilities. Now, the present day in the house of God, 
in the watchman and in the entire church is a day where the kind of testimony that Samuel had are no more found. In 1 Samuel chapter 12. First Samuel chapter 12. And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have heard, hearkened unto your voice. In all that ye said unto me, and I made a king over you, and now behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and gray headed. And behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord, and before his anointed Saul, whose ox have I taken. Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whom, whose hand have I received any bribe to blind my eyes therewith? And I will restore it to you. And they said, Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken out of any man's hand. And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that you have not found aught, anything, any sin, in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. We are living in a day where this kind of testimony is no more found. Making it necessary that we should ask the question again. We should, people should getting, be getting ready to take their sides. To take their sides. Listen to me. I am not joking. The Lord has passed me through hell. And through the fire of hell. He has brought me out from the fire of hell. The last three months, I was in hell fire. You know that I left, I went to where I went, arrived there 30th of uh, September, and returned the 1st of January. For those three months, I was in hell. No exaggeration. But he kept telling me that through that hell, he will give me a life and give me a word and give me status. I will shock the people. And anybody that does not listen to me, that person is doomed. As far as this ministry is concerned, take your time. I said, today, do you have this testimony? I have it. Whom did I use some gimmicks to get something from? To come and preach and say, your pastor is dying, doesn't have a good accommodation, doesn't have a car, is going about entering bus, and you people are riding in your jeeps. Did I preach such preaching? Did I say to anybody, you are there, 
And then I am going about and then jumping from bus to bus and I can't pay my children's school fees. And then all of you are sending your children unto overseas. That's defrauding. That is, that is using tactics. Using the tactics of Satan in order to bring something from the people. One of such people somewhere overseas would use that. We say, I'm suffering. I am suffering. I am suffering. I was told of somebody overseas also who came to Lagos and began to give testimony. We are suffering where we are. We are suffering where we are. We are suffering where we are. Now, by such testimony that was given, that individual was indicting the ministry, indicting me. You are suffering. You are suffering. Now, why are you suffering? Why are the people not of their own volition giving you things? Why are you using mechanisms of Satan to get something from the people? Listen to me. I don't use mechanisms and gifts fill me all around. Simple. That's because the people know the plainness of this man. From the one. I've been with you 40 solid years. Not 40 solid weeks. Not months. 40 solid years. Some of you have known me since 1981. When I came to some pause. Testify before God and before me. What evil you saw in me. Testify. Whom did I oppress? Now there are people who oppress people. They will not attend to somebody because the uh, but that person that person didn't attend to them. The person has money and now he didn't do anything. And so when the person is in trouble, they don't do anything. And there are, there are, there are people the elect to, to attend to. All the people that don't attend to them, they are calling their attention and they are not listening. They have problems and they are not listening. Samuel said, whose ox have I taken? Did I take any bribe from anybody to blind my eyes? Did I ask anybody to build me a house? Even I, did I ask anybody to build me a house? To buy me a car? I told them in Lagos recently that if not for security, I will return to Jigule and live in one, two, in one bedroom apartment. To show the people that I'm not interested. I didn't come into ministry in order to get money, in order to get house. Because I have learned to work hard from childhood. I have the training. I didn't have mother, I didn't have father. And I survived the war. Listen to me. I used to tell my children, tell anybody who cared to listen. We'll go to farmland. And now we will leave our village, that my village there, at 2 a.m. And arrive farmland at 9 a.m. On foot. And by 5, we are coming back. That's the train I got. 2 a.m. arrive earliest at that and do the work in the farm. 
I have education which nobody gave to me. So what is the matter? Did I put news into anybody's matters? Did I, did I get, you know, mismanage God's money? Recently, somebody stole God's money. Stole the tithe that was paid in a place. 500,000 naira, I stole it. Eventually, the thing was discovered. I don't know the, the, the things that the people are stealing. These are the days we're into where the people don't have the testimony of Samuel. I'm going to ask you, lady, do you have the testimony of Samuel? And there are people that are oppressors. These are the days where there are a lot of God's heritage. Lords of our God's heritage. First Peter chapter 5. I'm looking at the circumstance we, find we are into this time around. First Peter chapter 5. And I am reading there from verse uh, 1. The elders which are among you exhort whom, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly not for feedy looker, but of a ready mind. Now it is for feedy looker. For money. For money. For what to get. For the type of house to live in. For the type of car to ride. For the type of food to eat. For the convenience to have. But listen to me. I have this testimony. I do not know anything called inconvenience. If there is anything that is called inconvenience, I don't know. I never wondered in my life throughout these 40 years complained that this place is inconvenient. This place is hot. I don't have fun. This place should have AC and there is no AC. Not one day, privately or publicly. I don't care. I don't have, I don't know anything about inconvenience. It may be because of my training. After the war from Uli, we walked to Onitsha. In hours, we were at Onitsha. And the next moment, we walked to Upanam. And in some 30, 40 minutes, we have arrived at Upanam. And I was ready to go to Benin and Lagos on foot. Straight. If you will travel from here down to the river Oras, and then from 2 a.m., and by about 7 a.m. or 6 a.m., you arrive, and then the ferry, the paddler ferries you across the river Oras, and then you go a stretch of another 15 miles or more to the farmland. Then, I'm ready. During the war, I cycled from my home to Ozarebulu, bicycling. Maybe because of my training, I don't know any convenience, but there are people that are complaining today and full of complaints. Full of complaints in church. Full of demands. Full of looking for convenience. They are not ready to bear any hardship. Any iota of hardship. They are complaining. They are saying the money is not as coming. They were not being attended to. There is no, we don't have three square meals in a day. And now, 
Some like we are, we, are, we are reading here. It says, feed the flock in verse 2, which is among you, taking the other side, and uh, not by constraint, but this one now is by constraint. They are forced, but willingly, not for fear the liquor. That is not for what you get, not for money, but with a ready mind. Neither has been lost over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Being lost over God's heritage is, uh, look, now you are Lord. That is, everybody is under you. You shout them down. Nobody has any right to say anything. Because you are the same pastor. Because you are the same pastor's wife. Nobody has the right to say anything. You are general of a seer's wife. You are general state of a seer's wife. Nobody says anything. Even with bad, bad examples, they won't talk to you because you won't listen to anybody. Everybody sit down. They are faulting you here and there. And then you are not bothered about that. That is the circumstance we find in the church today. Church of the watchman and then the entire church. To them is the day of people being demigods and demigoddesses. Leaders being gods. Putting God into their pocket. Saying things that they should not say. Behaving the way they should not behave. These are the days of sinning and ministering. Sinning and ministering. Is there not somebody that sinned great sins, sinned great sins, messed up six women in his congregation and was still and was still ministering? And coming around me, not afraid, sinning and ministering. Sinning and ministering. Stealing and ministering. Is that not an individual that was brought to me the other day? And the lady said, this is my manager. He has embezzled all my money. And the person was choir master in the same parish. And then he was doing like this. That it is true. I am looking for employment to pay back. And the woman now this time that I returned, the woman wrote me a letter. He's now begging. He said, I don't, I don't have uh, food to eat again. This man embezzled, took all my money. He made the manager. And then he used all the money of the woman to do his own matters. Pay his children's school fees. And all those things. That is church. And still, command choir. HSR Shadows. These are the last times that iniquity has abound. And the love of many was cold. Listen to me, men and brethren. Are we not in lack of human resources now? We are. Now as I'm talking about now breaking our our breaking our walk that is into small, 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 small units so that we can give it to uh, uh, many, many people so that they will be able to do uh, su sufficient work, that is uh, work. I gave you an example of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, a local government area. And I told you, I don't have the papers now, I told you that it, 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 it had a town, 10 villages, 10 large villages, Uli town, 9 large villages, Okija town, 30 live, live, large villages, then um, Opo, 
and uh, uh, Amoka and all the people. There are about seven or eight. Now, and you know that to give somebody to be a local government superintendent is a very large work. Now, but now we have people, we have, for instance, on each other's diocese, has a lot of local government areas. How can that person do all these things? Now, how many, how many, how many churches are in Uli that has nine large villages? And some of the villages, one church is not sufficient. So now that we are talking or breaking down so that we can do, can we have the people that want to serve the Lord? Can we have the people that said, I am on the side of the Lord, come what may? Uh, can we have the people that are saying, look, enough, enough of dilly darling. Enough of dilly darling. These are times where the gains of this life, the money, the things that they have, education has uh, now overtaken them and they will not be they will not be they are not available for the lord now and uh, they consider us as stupid but i'm yet going to be stupid if i should live my life all over again i will choose to be aloysius despite the hell i will choose to remain stupid yes i was stupid in that I abandoned the quantity surveying which I loved like you would love a wife. I am stupid in the, because I followed the Lord and left Enugu to go to Deti Lagos, which then nobody, no money will have made me to do. Yes, I'm stupid. But it, it is that stupidity, it is that yieldedness to the Lord that now brought this watchman. Now today, that we find people who cannot give up. They cannot give up. They cannot give up pursuing money. They cannot give up the fat money they are earning. They are working in oil companies. They are working in this place and that place and then they are working in the banks and uh, this and that but you see I am sorry for such people I am sorry for such people you know why you see you don't know the way the Lord is think thinking but I am going to tell you the way the Lord is thinking the way the Lord is thinking is this what he is scheming is greater than what you are scheming his project is higher than all the projects of the governments put together. His project that he's pursuing is higher and more, more interesting to him than all the projects of, uh, of the whole world put together. And if he get involved in his project and then do what? And then jettison that other thing that appears to be uh, uh, great in the eyes of men. Now you have turned to be his friend. Shall we have, do we have such men? Today in church, we are having people that their belly is their God. They want Jets they want to fly around. Nonsense. You know why I say nonsense? And I have no sin to confess. You want to fly around in jets. Let me ask you Did you go to British Airways and they said that there is no chance? If there is no chance, you go to you go to KLM. If there is no chance, you go to Arik. If there is no chance, you go to Dara. Too many carriers. Did you hear me? 
The British Prime Minister doesn't have jet. Flies British Airways plane. I don't think he has jet. But pastors are talking about jet. And they keep jets and, uh, and put them in the airports. And then pay a lot of money. Listen to me. I saw in the internet. Somebody downloaded a number of those things into my wife's phone. And then they will bring this Nigerian preacher. And they will show what is preaching. Preaching prosperity. They will bring the picture. The picture of this person. I can mention the name but I will not mention. And now they will show what is preaching. And what all those uh, big names. Big names in invited commas. And then they show what is preaching. And the commentator said. But whatsoever that you are preaching. And you are not preparing the church for the rapture. That you are preaching is absurd. Your preaching is useless. There are people who are following such preachers who preach only on faith to make the children of God to be wealthy men. And then they become covetous people. There are those who are preaching on worldliness, that is, they make them to be seducers in church. And people are following them. And then they are reading their materials. My friend, this is the day in which we are. So, there is need for some call, some decision to take. Now, it is the day I have talked about Fido Luca, when money is their God, and then It is the day of sinning and ministering. It is the day of uh, the prophet heading west instead of east. Go to Jonah. Where Jonah headed was west. God, Nineveh was uh, east. And Jonah who headed uh, to Tarshish, west. Because he was looking for safety. He didn't want any inconvenience. He was looking for the promotions of this world. It is the day when the passage of time has brought upon many pollutions unspeakable. It is the day that we are having abominations in the sanctuary. Do you know that talisman is being used in many churches? Do you know that many pastors are going with talisman? That is, they go to places and get, the, get talisman. And then many of the churches. And... Uh, Going by the spirit of divination. Going by the spirit of divination. And divining to people. And the people are following. It is the day of a terrible decadence. I don't know people that have brought strange fire into the church, to the church of the watchman. And very many, many things are happening now, I was told. But hear the instruction from the man of God. From today, draw your ear now and hear. From today onwards, there is nothing anymore like Covenant Sunday, like, uh, like Thanksgiving, like uh, what, what do they call them? Can you remind me? 
all those things that they have brought inside the church and then I hear that they bring cows they bring rams and this and that from today all those things are abrogated did anybody hear what I said did anybody hear what I said I said all those things are, are what they must not be in any watchman location no dedication that is you carry all the people we will tell you what we allow and how we allow it what should happen from today everything is abrogated before we turn the place into another thing altogether and it is already turning into another thing altogether strange fire but you know that the sons of Aaron offered the fire that they were not commanded and the Lord consumed them it is the day that the Lord is, uh, is having, a lo uh, having trouble serious trouble it's a day that, that he's looking for people that have testimony pastor that has testimony woman leader that has testimony that can challenge other people woman leader that has testimony worker that has testimony please worker that has testimony pastor that has testimony that can stand in the congregation and say what Samuel said and the people will be able to say we know you you have not defrauded us you are not a proud man you are not a sentimental man you are neither evil nor Yoruba nor Efi nor Ishekiri we know you we love everybody you attend to everybody we know you you are not looking for anybody's money you don't use gimmicks we know your wife your wife is a very plain person not people that are in cold war their war is cold the war between russia and the USS, ussr and the usa in the olden times and then they are greeting but they are warring inside their hearts The Lord is looking for people who are not sinning and preaching. Sinning and preaching. Sinning and preaching. You go to embrace another man's wife or a girl and then you go and preach. Recently, I began a message and uh, I don't know, know the number of places that have given the brief exhortation. And I titled it, Your Judge is by You. In the course of time, God helps us. The message will come across all of us. Your judge is by You. The person that will judge and condemn you is by You. That message came one day as I visited Ayetro. I didn't visit to pray or to preach, no. I visited to, to see our printing machine that was there, which we had bought long ago. And then the people saw that I came around, and the pastor came saying, now take over. I said, no, go ahead and do your administration. And I was about going, but somehow I said, the people have already seen me, so let me wait. And then the, he finished ministration, and I came in, and I went to the altar after his ministration. And then I made all of them to draw their seats near the pulpit. And they came in. And then I said, who among you wants to go to heaven? And they said, everybody raise his hand. I said, okay, let me ask you a question. This is Ayetro. 
Now, if you see somebody that is at mile two, mile two bus stop, and the person is sitting toward a papa, a papa port, or Tinkan Island port, and then you ask the person, where are you going? And the person says, I'm going to Badagre. Is the person lost or not? They said the person is lost. Now, if you tell the person that this road, the way you are going will not lead you to Badagri, this way will lead you to Badagri, and the person refuses, will the person be lost? They said the person will be lost. Then I said, somebody has to guide you to heaven. Somebody has to guide you to heaven. Somebody that has been guided has to guide you to heaven. Somebody that God speaks to has to guide you to heaven. In this ministry, listen to me, somebody is being spoken to mouth to mouth, like friend to friend, and I happen to be that person. And he tells me about this ministry. He tells me what is going to happen and what is about to happen. And then, I looked into the congregation and I saw a woman. And I said, Sister, can you stand up? He said, It's now a pastor's wife. And he stood up. I said, How old were you when you lived with me in a three bedroom flat? She was about 19 years, school certificate holder. And we lived in that three bedroom flat, she and I alone. I said, sister, how, how long? He said, more than one and a half years, thereabout. Did I enter the room where you were? He said, no. I said, I'm your judge. I'm the judge of the pastors. I was full. Now, by that time, I was, uh, I was 36. Full-blooded. But that was my choice. That was my choice. But very many people here now have sins of immorality. And uh, you find that we've come to the point where there is so much sin, so much, so much, uh, so much, so much controversy, so much disrepute in the church. I saw a clip of somebody in South Africa that claims to have the power of God and they will command the people, the congregation and they will go out and begin to eat grass like ox. Oh, you have not had it? And then I was asking, is this thing real? I called Dom who was in South Africa. I said, did you, this thing real? He said, it is real. That he even makes them to drink petrol. And he says the power of God. These are the days of confusion. And every person is a power and has power of God. Now and they fear Nigeria. And uh, I said what? They fear Nigeria. And then and then you do not want to be guided. You do not want somebody that has a discerning spirit. To show you that that person, even though he may be prophesying and the prophecy may be coming, he has divination spirit, but it's not the spirit of Christ. Listen to me. If Apostle Paul was not in the was not around, who was traveling with him? Why was he Silas? When that spirit, that lady that was with spirit of divination was operating. That lady had captivated all the people. Am I right? And now, now he has seen the people and the, and the, and the, and the spirit played a great trick and then spoke the truth. Here are men of God that brought us the word and the way of salvation. True or false? Complete truth. And now, if the apostle Paul did not have the spirit of discernment, and then left it there. The trick is this, when they now go away, what will happen? The whole of the people 
the people, the people that we follow will now be ten times more. Because these men of God have approved that this person. But the person that has the spirit of discernment said, you speak the truth but you want to deceive. And now get out of the person. Now, you don't want to be guided. These are the days that every person is a man of God. But every person is not a Moses. Did you hear me? Every person is not an Abraham. So, it is a time that you need to make your choice as to on whose side you want to be. You want to be on the side of the Lord. And if you want to be on the side of the Lord, it means that you are saying, I want to be on the side of uh, Jesus Christ. And I want to have the qualities of Jesus Christ. I want to have the qualities of Jesus Christ. I want to have the qualities of Jesus Christ. That's what you are talking about. If you say we want to be on the side of the Lord, remember that those people, they ran and repented of their error. They were involved in what happened. Were they not involved? They were involved. But they repented. They said no. This was error. We are going to the side of the Lord. And God forgave their sins and used them to judge the other people. Think. These are the days where they are divorcing and remarrying. They are divorcing and remarrying. They are fighting. These are the days one person told us, why should I be a Christian? All the time, my father is a pastor. And that person was born in this church. And the, first, the father is a pastor. And he told some person, some leader, why I don't have any reason to be a Christian. Because all the time that I have known my father and my mother, they live separately. And whenever they come together, it is fighting. That's what the girl revealed. So I don't want to be a Christian. Yeah, it's pastor. I told you that in Lagos some time ago, a boy of six years or five years called his name, wrote me a letter, and then used the laptop to seal it properly. And, and said to our daddy G.S., nobody must open it. And then I opened the something carefully. And then the young boy with a small, with a small boy's writing said, Daddy, my name is Soso. I don't like how my father is treating my mother. He's beating my mother every day and he's a leader in church. I want you to do something about it. Are there not women that are saying to their husbands, or I deal with you? And they are in church. It is a time where the church doesn't have any meaning. Sometimes, listen to me, eh? you know what? We blame some people that, that speak evil about church. There was a president of Nigeria, former president, that said, called pastor stupid. And he said, can my foot. Now we were blaming him. But you don't blame him altogether. When he was there, all those people were coming to Asarok and they saw what they were doing. And so when they said the can, he said, oh, can what? Can my foot. And called the pastor stupid. It was there that made him say that. One of those people that belong to us, is now late, was going to that house rock. And I knew the antecedents of this person. And then he came to me one day and said, Daddy, what I saw there, God forbids. 
They had to run. What they saw with the pastors. And come around. And seek the benefit from politicians. That is the church where we are today. And God is looking for those that will be on his side. Who is on the Lord's side? In the day of great decadence. Who is on the Lord's side? In the day. But you can't distinguish between the harlot. And the Christian. And everybody. Is allowed. Listen to me. I just came from India and one of the Sundays, a few Sundays back, I was in fellowship. And they wanted me to preach and I said, no, you go and preach, I want to listen. And then while we were there, two girls walked in. Two Nigerian girls that were schooling in that school. And they walked in with such dresses that, my God, the skirts they were wearing. And then, at the end of the day, I was complaining to one of the brothers. And the brother said to me, the young man said to me, Daddy, that was good one. Oh. He said that there was a day that one came. And what he was wearing was so nauseating. That the pastor, Pastor Sunday, told somebody to take her out and tell her to get away. The Indians are their judge. You cannot see the lap of an Indian woman. But they are Hindu people, majorly. You cannot see anything. Listen to me. As war closes, India is one point something billion. The streets are filled like bees are released. And as war closes in the evening, some are looking for bus, some are looking for tekeke, some are going to the train station, and as soon as it clock seven or eight, all the women have gone to their homes. You cannot see any girl outside on the street of India. Never. But they are roaming about in all Nigeria. They have learned from the Western world. And church has become infested. Who is on the law side? Let's read the scriptures. And then close with it. Jeremiah. Chapter 6. Verse 16. Thus said the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is a good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find rest. For your souls. But they said. We will not walk. Therein. Who is on the Lord's side. And wants to walk. In the old paths. That. We began with. The old path. That. I've walked in. Listen to me. Laboring. 
laboring and not complaining. I had mentioned to you how that people destroy other people in church and discourage them. Somebody told me as he quit dentistry, God said quit dentistry and become full-time pastor. And another person that was a doctor came to him and was saying, what do you mean? You mean you want to pack up your training as a doctor? To work as pastor in church? I've told you how somebody, listen to me, that was, that is working here, now came telling me how that he visited a man and he had taught that man mathematics in a secondary school. And the man had happened to be working an rock in the last government, not the present one. And then he visited the man in his village when the man returned to the village and people were scrambling to go to visit him in order to get one favor or the other. And when this man knew that this is old mathematics teacher came around, he said, everybody give way. I want to see the person that made me. He taught me mathematics at Onyogu Secondary School. And the brother told me he went to see him. And the man was asking him, how is it and what do you want? And then he told him everything where he's working. And the man said, no problem. Your Lord will be, is better from this day. I have uh, information for you. I am making a way for you at Asorok. And then the uh, salary, basic salary is one million naira. Not to talk of the orishi rishi things that you are going to get. Is anybody listening to me? And then the brother teaching mathematics here told me, when he told the man, I'm going to think about it, the man became angry and said, you're going to think about it. All the people that are wanting it and, and you are, this kind of proposal is being made and you're going to think about it. And then he came back and he told me that he didn't need to pray about it, but that he mentioned it to some people here. And they uh, said you, you should go and take it. And they even said that he's, uh, he's foolish if he didn't go to take it. But he told me that he didn't need to pray. He said for two things. Number one, I know that if I go there, I will mortgage my soul. And then I will come out polluted. And I will no more be a Christian. Number two, I do not know how to explain the matter to Jesus. But... I came in here to help in the work that we're doing, and money now dragged me out to ask a rock. How will I explain it to him? On considering the two reasons, he did not pray, and he threw away the proposal and remained in this place. But there were people who told him that he's stupid. Think about it. In this church, there are people who are discouraging other people. And when we begin to talk on who is on the side of Abraham, on the side of Moses, eh, then we will really talk. And we will really talk. Meanwhile, who is on the side of the Lord? That person must make this election. And what is that election? Let's see it in Matthew chapter 10. Whatever it will take you to be like this person, our master, our teacher, the rabbi, you get set for it. If that is your decision, then you are really on the Lord's side. Matthew chapter 10. Shall we read verse 25 together? Are you there? Matthew chapter 10 verse 25 says, 
it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his lord stop there it is enough that is it is sufficient it is proper that the disciple should be like his master now if you do not want to be like jesus if you do not want to have the characteristics that are found in jesus then you are not wanting to be on the lost side because in actual fact please look up in actual fact these are the only people that God is looking for men and women in actual fact these not people who are thinking that this thing is just an ideal it's not possible no if it were not possible jesus wouldn't say it people who want to be like their master who want to be examples the people that want to be on the lord's side they want to jettison the abominations they want to jettison pride. They want to jettison ego. They want to jettison the cravings of their minds. They want to, listen to me, obey the rules of the church. Obey the rules of the church on marriage. Unfortunately, somebody is pastoring, but he with tricks he concocts some testimony and speaks to the lady and then they agree and then the pastor is a pastor what kind of pastor is he he's a hypocrite he's a sinner he doesn't have any testimony and nobody can be better than like than him he cannot produce people better if there is anything going wrong he cannot correct it he doesn't have the moral standing is anybody listening to me? If you are saying, I am on the side of the Lord in these days of decadence, please take note of what you, want, what, you, what you are saying. If you do not want to be this thing that I am saying, don't declare the declaration. Don't. Don't declare the declaration. Tell the Lord what you want to do with me. Do If you can't kill me, kill me. Don't step forward because I'm going to make people step forward a little as a sign that you want to be on the side of the Lord. Hear it in the choir. Hear it every person that is anywhere that is attending this meeting who wants to be on the side of the Lord because abominations have taken place in the sanctuary. The church is dilapidated. But God wants to build a church that is rapturable. And now he wants men and women that can compare to Christ Jesus in character. In everything. And listen to this. In John's Gospel chapter 1, we have John's record. Concerning what they were. John chapter 1, and we read verse 14. And the word that was, that's Jesus, the second person in the blessed Trinity, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bear witness of him and Christ, saying, This was he of whom I speak. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me, and of his fullness, and of his fullness of character, fullness of faith, fullness of right living. Please take note that Jesus interacted with Mary Magdalene and interacted with these other women and loved them, the holy love for that matter. Take note 
that there was no discrimination. Take note that he stood before the Jews and said, can you point to me one thing that you saw in me? Take note that he said that you must be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as the dove. Are you harmless or are you very harmful with the words of your mouth, with your attitude toward the people? You are harmful, harmful pastor, harmful women leader, harmful overseer. Harmless as a dove, that is the demand of the master. That is the demand of the master. And only such people will he use in the watchman. Watchman is another, not another congregation. It is the watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. By the time you come back, we will go to the question, who is on the side of the vision, of the Lord's vision? And I will show what the vision is about. Who is on the side of that vision? Who is on the side of that vision? How many people are, are in the vision? Who is on the side of that vision? And then, finally, who is on the side of the vision? Who is on the side of Abraham? Listen to me. Joshua, tell them wherever you see these people. Tell them that this man is a second Abraham. Tell them there was the first Adam. And there was the second Adam. There was a second, a first Abraham. And there is a second Abraham. What am I talking about? If he was not a second Abraham, why did God say to him to go to Hebrews chapter? The thing written concerning Abraham. Abraham, is he not dead? Therefore sprang there even of one. And him as good as dead. That's how it has been over the past 20 years. So many are the stars in the sky, a multitude. And as the stars which are by the seashore, innumerable. Was he joking? No, sir. Does he mean it? Yes, sir. Did he apply it to me? Yes, if he applied it to me, then I'm an Abraham. Simple and short. If you don't accept it, pack your load and go. There is a first Moses, there is a second Moses. These people needed to come out from Egypt and somebody was elected. Did he go to elect? Didn't he see Aaron? Didn't he see these other people? But there was a quality that he saw in Moses. God does not go to choose anybody. There are very many people, I don't think. <laughs> Uh, you arrogate the power to yourself. You say you are an Abraham. Now, you are better than me. Why didn't he choose you? I have no quality. Why didn't he choose you? I'm asking you. Why didn't he choose you? He chooses anyhow. Nothing like that. He saw Abraham in Mesopotamia. He saw the man was seeking God. He was in the midst of people who were worshipping idols. And then he said, come. And Abraham announced he is going out. You think he kept quiet? They were asking him, where are you going? And he said, God spoke to me. And Lord said, I follow my uncle. The other people were watching. And he disappeared in the horizon. He saw something in Abraham. He saw something in, in Noah. He saw something in Enoch. He saw something in Enos. And then at the time of Enos, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. It was Enos that said, who is on the side of the Lord? All oh, this rigmarole, over and out. I read the Bible. Who is on the side of the Lord? The person must decide. And you want to have the qualities of Jesus. That's all. And I show you more of his qualities, which he commands that we must have. In Isaiah chapter 42, we read, 
Verse 1, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect, in whom I so delighted, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth justice to the Gentiles. He shall not cry. Ah, that word cry. Let me tell you what it means. He shall not cry out. Now, lift up. Lift up means raise his voice. Not cause his voice, that is, not lift up his voice, that is, raise his voice to be heard in the street. A breeze reed, it shall not break, and a smoking flax. Smoking flax means dimly burning. You will not be able to extinguish. Now, that is a, a candle that is dimly burning. That is a, a, a lamp, mpanaka that is dimly burning. He will not be able to do <laughs> because of the meekness that he was found. But are you not shouting on the streets? Are you not shouting in the streets, in the flat, in the, in the place where you are living? And all your neighbors are hearing as you are shouting. As you are shouting at your wife, as you are shouting at your children. Final question. Who among you is on the Lord's side? The day is far spent. The devils have done a lot of mesmerization. And they have, they have finished they have finished the people. I said they have finished the people. They have finished the people. People have committed sin and they have started church from watchman. And they refuse to go do their discipline. Observe their discipline. And went to start church. Church is started in error. After one million years, those churches are standing on error. Who is on the law side? If you think you are, please, you can rise on your feet and begin to think. Think about the Levites. What are the things that are in you that this message has dug up, dug up. The Spirit of God has made you to know. The Lord is looking for those that are on his side. Those that they can trust. Those that have testimonies. You want to remain and be counted among the abominable. Somewhere the people are now pastors. Some young men that claim to have been born again and you cannot guarantee their salvation. The next moment they have floated ministry. And the ministries are on every side. In the villages and in the townships. 
Everywhere is filled with ministry. And there is confusion. Which washman lady is saying, From this day, I'm on the Lord's side. I have to drop this, I have to drop that. It's not late yet. I want to have a testimony. Whatsoever I need to do, or correct my ways, I want to do it. Marriages have scattered in the watchman. The marriages, marriage cases that even this one that I've come back, I have listened to me, look up to me before you continue praying. In my mailbox, I have reports, have letters. Now, some of the Dyson pastors here, somebody is writing, saying that Dyson pastor, there is somebody that is, uh, that is a sinner, a woman, and then the, uh, the, he, will not, he will not discipline the person. The person is untouchable. I have the mail in my box accusing a Dyson pastor. Recently, a case came up here. Marriage that lasted for only five months. We may have had it. Washman marriage lasted five months. And the woman went and hired a pickup. And in the broad daylight, went to the husband's place to pack her things. And when the pickup man reached there and saw that uh, this is a married person, he said, No. And the brother of the brother of the bro of our bro so called brother told the, the, the pickup man, pack her things. I know my brother, pack her things. And she packed her things in the broad daylight after five months of marriage in Watchman. And then down to her village. And according to her, she was reaching her town. She became very ashamed. And then stopped on the way and told the, the driver, go to Soso, Soso village. Now unload the things in Soso compound. And then from there she returned to her senior sister in another town. And when the matter was brought up, come and see all the people that were involved in the concoction of the marriage. And the thing gave me a lot of wahala, a lot of headache. And as I was praying, listen to me, God said they concocted something that they called marriage, that I should quash it. And I quashed it. He said it was a concoction. I called all the people that were involved. He told me to excuse the Dyson pastor. They didn't give him good information. Concoction. In a place where somebody sticked out his neck and lived right and suffered for it, and then somebody will come in there now to pollute it, I am sorry for the person. Very sorry. Very sorry. Very sorry. In a place where God put some people through fire. And then you come there to spoil it.
The watchman ministry is not compromisable. It's not negotiable. It's not just a church. It's the church properly selected for a, def a definite objective. And if you want to be a minister, a worker, you need to take your time. You need to want to be, you know, on the Lord's side. You need to be on his side. You need to be like Jesus. If you are not willing to be like Jesus, then quit. If you are doing business, you want to do business the way Jesus will do business with people. If you are working for somebody, working for government, working for church, you need to walk the way Jesus will walk. Who is on the Lord's side in the midst of dilapidation? Who is on the Lord's side? Let me tell you. I, don't need, I can talk and talk. Look, let me tell you. This, our business, is not for every person, every manner of person. It's not for every manner of person. No, sir. It's not for every manner of person. It's not for every manner of person. Pastoral work in the watchman is not for every manner of individual. It's not for every manner of individual. It's for men and women that have made up their minds, have made their choices as to the way they want to go. And they have stamped their feet and said, I don't go this way, this is the way I go. I made my choice in 1975 the way I wanted to go. Many of the people, your problem is you refuse to be taught. And if you are not taught, you are not cleansed. You refuse to be taught, you remain uncleansed. Who is on the Lord's side? Because the places are polluted. Who is on the Lord's side? Everybody on the street is a Christian, is born again. Showing sensitive parts of the body is no more anything. Go to South Africa. See the singers. See the singers in Nigeria. See the shows. See the women. Go to the churches. One woman leader sent palming instrument to the, to the, to the daughter in, in India. But it's a woman leader. In our church. And then when she was confronted from there, she began to talk rubbish. You don't believe what we are saying. Don't believe it. What a hypocrisy. What a hypocrisy. I said, what a hypocrisy. It's the mercy of God that is keeping you alive. <laughs> I told you somebody died in the church and God told me that the person wouldn't have died if he was not in the church. Because all the people in the outside have not died who are sinners. How many people died in the church that went to heaven? This time around I told you if anybody dies we go and bury the person. That's all. Who is on the Lord's side? I live, I, I, three months I spent, and the way the money, I, I, I went to hire a place where we were paying 3,000, 3,000 something naira a month. I mean, 3,000 something, 3,000 something naira in a day. That's the, the place I lived in the three months. 3,000. Me, yes. Because when you serve money, there's no money in the church. Cooking our food there. So I'm accountable. God knows it.
for you get the money let's shop let's shop the money your wife is calling you let's shop the money God does not muzzle the mouth of the oil that dress out the corn. That's what you quote. Church in Nigeria has gone haywire. You don't believe our doctrines. Why are you here? If the, if the rules and the dress style is difficult, why are you still here now? That's the question I'm asking. Why not give way now? Why not go to some place where you like? Where the things that they are doing, you like it. How is it that somebody is going against me? Eh? Is it proper that you should go against me? Go to where you like now and leave us alone. So that if we remain ten, we know that we are ten brethren. Who is on the Lord's side? And who is on the side of the, of the vision? And who is on the side of this man? We are going to talk about that. Make a choice this day. And make a good choice. I recommend that you make a good choice. You need to throw away every nonsense. Everything that has put you into pollution. Throw it away. If there is anything that you need to confess, you go and confess it. If there is any restitution, go and do it. And face the shame. It's time to pray. Who is on the Lord's side? I want to see the hand of that individual up. Who is on the Lord's side? Now begin to, begin to reject everything. Begin to reject everything that should be rejected. You know yourself, you know your life. Our church cannot be polluted. Your friends cannot be those that destroy church. And are the people that are in your contact uh, list. You are discussing with them every day. And they are telling you something against the church. Telling you something against the watchman. Who is on the Lord's side? He must have a, a, a forgiving mind. Somebody that has a is forgiving. Somebody that is accommodating. A pastor and his wife. That are that have that have commendation. They have a testimony. The people that are under them are saying, These are men and women of God. Who is on the Lord's side? Not the woman that is taking, that has you jumped that uh, power, the authority. And she is now the, the same pastor instead of the wife. She is calling the shots. She is ruling everybody. Not the men that are covering the evil deeds of their wives. Who are the sons of Levi? Who are the Levites that responded, that repented, that fell on their faces? I said, Lord, forgive. And God accepted them and made them special in Israel. Who are the Levites? Who among the watchmen are the Levites? The church of the living God has suffered some damage at the hands of people 
I yielded themselves unto Satan. And the Lord is saying, who is on the Lord's side? In the watchman, who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? Who is saying, I want to be like my master? My master was on the Lord's side. There's so much commotion, there's so much pollution. Men in church and women in church have murdered the church to be, be evil spoken of among them that are without. Lord, but I am on the Lord's side. God forbids that I should be a part of them. That bring disdain to the house of the Lord. God forbids that I should be among them that bring disdain. I bring this day. Let's begin to round off our prayers. Let's begin to round off our prayers. Precious Lord, how I pray. Let's round up our prayer, round up our prayers. Amen. Amen. Who is on the lost side? Who is he that is considering? Who is she that is considering the damage that has been done in the universal church by Satan using the hands of men and women? And the person is saying, I cannot be party to that damage anymore. God forbids. I'm on the lost side. I want to be among the people that he will use for recovery. Houses can be at peace if people become Christians. If they know how to overlook things that should be overlooked, if they know how to readily forgive when somebody has done something wrong and they saying I'm sorry about that which I have done or that which I have said if they are humble enough to accept error but there are those that are terribly self defensive
Your defensive mechanisms are terrible. And so the church is suffering. Lord, I pray that you give me people that are on the side of the Lord. That's all I need. I don't need any other kind of persons. I don't need any other kind of persons in this ministry. People that think about their lives, day in, day out. And then use the mirror of God's word and God's standard to judge. And the water of God's standard and God's word to cleanse. Ah, Christianity is, should be sweet. Marriage should be sweet. That is the intention. The bed and the fire. But today is not. Father, what are you going to do with human beings? What will you do? Going by your demands, going by what you want to do, we must all together be separate people. Going by your program, the watchman people must all together be special people. It's not negotiable. It cannot be by any other way. No other means. It cannot be by any other lifestyle other than having the fullness of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He accommodated the people in the day but they were not baptized with the Holy Spirit. They were dangling. He should have faith but they didn't have. He would just say Poor generation, how long will I be with you? Let's go. Precious Father, he excused their ignorance. Lord, I should be peace in church. Lord, I don't understand how people can be in church and they discourage other people that want to work for the Lord. And I said they are Christians. These are criminals. Complete criminals. They use their words to discourage somebody. Say you want to serve God. Want to go and serve in the church. Want hunger to kill you. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. How people can go against the house where they are, set it on fire and remain in that house. Lord, I pray you, let all these people change. Change is possible, Lord, depending on the choice of an individual. You don't force change on anybody. It is as we choose. If we choose to be changed, you change us. That is what I know. That's my experience all these 40 solid years. If a person is readily in discovering himself or herself, doesn't need a lot of preaching, will always judge and say, look, I have not spoken right. 
this way I'm going is not good. My shouting is not good. Looking at scriptures, they didn't hear the voice of Jesus on the street. He was as meek as the lamb. He was taken to the slaughter and he didn't open his mouth. If would they shun criticisms, there will be peace in charge. If the pastors do their work and love the congregation, precious Father, and our plan, this congregation will willingly even satisfy their needs. There will be no need for gimmicks. There will be no need for gimmicks. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Because I know that uh, there are people, and I think there are many, who have decided to be on the side of the Lord. And so be it. Let them succeed. Let them actually be accepted on the side of the law. Lord, let them be the Levites of the day. Because there must be some kind of Levites for this day. The whole Christian church is plagued. Plagued with a lot of a lot of sinister things. Things that are incredible. Things that we see and are bizarre. And people are talking. And the whole place is filled with, with confusion. The internet is filled with activities of men having ropes and claiming to have the power of God, my Father and my God. In such a time, at such a time, you are looking for people that will be on the side of the Lord. I pray that you find them among watchmen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, find that those men and women among the watchmen. Precious master, this is my prayer. This is my earnest prayer. Lord, I desire that as we finish in this meeting. And people return to pastor the locations. Eternal rock of ages. That we will not have all the turmoil anymore. That people under people will begin to see that these men are men of God indeed. And these women are women of God indeed. Precious Master, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lord, I know that it is impossible if a person did not make a choice. But once a person makes the right choice, God comes on board. I thank you very much. It is easy. Once somebody says, Lord, I want to have the fullness of Christ. And that's where I stand. Lord, no compromise. I don't want any other thing other than the qualities of Christ. God will give the person some substantial measure of the fullness of Christ. That is uh, not negotiable. I know that that is your way. You treat us according to our desire. And according to our decisions, you don't force anybody. We are not robots. We are free moral agents. And you want us to make our choices. And the Levites made a choice, wise choice, and quickly for that matter, and became a special breed in Israel. Thank you very much. And took tithes from the people. The things that belong to God belong to them. My Father, my God, let watchman be Levites. Amen. Even in the present day. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody must save somebody. Amen. Some church must save the churches. Amen. Some group of people must save the day. Amen. Lord, it must be the watchman. Amen. Lord, it must be the watchman. Amen. Some place must bring sanity. Amen. Some people must be, bring sanity. Amen. Some pastors must have credence. So when the people are saying that pastors are thieves, somebody is saying, no, I know those that are not. 
So when they are saying all of them are magicians, somebody will say, shut up your mouth and know those that are not. And let them be watchmen. Let them be watchmen. Lord, let them be watchmen. Let them be on the side of the Lord. Let the women be on the side of the Lord. Let the, all the nasty things be thrown overboard. Let them perish. Let the nasty things perish. Let them be drowned. Let them be drowned in the Atlantic Ocean. Take them out from our lives. Precious Master. Let that be love. Let that be joy. Let that be the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit. Not the fruit of the flesh. Not the works of the flesh. But the fruits of the Spirit. Let fornication cease. Let adultery cease. Let quarreling cease. Let talkativeness cease. Let immorality cease. Let friendlessness cease. Now we may go forward as a congregation, as a special congregation, as Levites, as that that God can depend upon. Precious Father, did they not sing, can God depend upon you? Lord, I pray, make us dependable. I say, make us dependable. Make us that you should depend upon us. Oh, let it be a different congregation. This is what I began for. I didn't begin for another thing. I'm not interested in anything other than this. If it is otherwise, kill me out of place. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave and see a dilapidated church. What am I doing with it? Why did I suffer? Why did I go to hell? Great Father in heaven. If it is to have people that do not love the Lord. People that do not love one another. People that are sinners. People that don't have a testimony. Then, but if you kill me, you have done me evil. You should have killed me in 1975. After laboring for 40 solid years. Now, what is my reward? What is my mountain? Am I looking for a house? Am I looking for aeroplane? Am I looking for first class? Am I looking for a big building? Am I looking for a big car? I want to build the church. The church of the living God. The universal church. I want to see a rapturable church. I want to see a rapturable church. That is where I'm going. That is the no more, no less. Anybody that is not going this way is not my friend. Precious master. That person should leave me alone. That person should get away from me. I don't need such a person. I don't need such women. I don't need such men. I don't need such boys. I don't need such girls. Precious master. I'm looking for those that want to build a church. And prepare the church for a rapture. The time is consummated. The world, the world is at problem. And the church is waiting. God is waiting for the church to be rapturable. That he may take it away. So that the Antichrist will appear. And then he will begin his judgments. Lord, I don't want what don't, don't, that's a pastor that creates problem for me. People that have grown thick. Lord, you remember that my hair condition was not caused by me. Lord, you know that it is church. It is the problems of church. And you pass me through hellfire. Save me, Lord. Let the king join thy strength as I see. As I see a rapturable church. Save me Lord.
As we go to the places not to settle this problem, settle the other one and spend hours and spend nights. Save me, Lord. Let me hear good news. I thank you because you've answered me. Pastor Gideon, can you come and, and pray? Pray for these people. Pray as God will lead you. God of mercy. God of mercy and God of compassion. We have come this afternoon. Lord, we have seen that we have been clamors, clamors of being on the side of God, but with the truth that we have had this afternoon, Lord, it is obvious that we have not been on your side. Because if we have been on your side, all the things, all the evils, all the anomalies, all the wicked practices, all the sinful activities that have been found in us wouldn't have been found in us. So Lord, we accept that we have been on our own. We have not been on, on your side. We have been thinking that we have been on your side, but from the revelation, from the truth, your servant has revealed it is clear that we have not been on your side and we come before you this afternoon Lord in repentance we are the leaders of the church we come repenting asking Lord for your mercy asking Lord for your forgiveness Asking Lord that you will take us back again. Father, we are returning this afternoon like the prodigal son. Father, we have been on our own. The prodigal son at a point decided to be independent of his father, thinking he was sufficient, and he packed his things. I went to a far country and then and suffered. But when he came to his senses, he said, I will rise. I'll go to my father. I'll tell him, I am not qualified to be your son. I have sinned against heaven and earth. Make me as one of your hired servants. And he returned. And his father had mercy upon him. Father, this afternoon, we are returning and we're asking you to accept us again and wash us again with the blood of Jesus and let us have a place again in your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty Father, we have by our actions and inactions wounded you, offended your servant, created problems, caused confusions here and there. Lord, but we are repenting. We are repenting. We have repented. We are asking you, please, Father, forgive us. Have mercy on the entire leadership of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Father, accept us again and help us to start afresh with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we have seen circumstances of our time. We've seen that we have a choice, a choice of deciding today to be on the side of the Lord. We have seen the troubles that come upon the church because the troubles we have suffered because of being on our own, because of a uh, 
not listening to whom we will listen to, who we're supposed to listen to. But this afternoon, Lord, I want to say again that we have made up our minds we will listen. We will be directed. Amen. Your servant repeatedly said, you are not cleansed until you are taught. Your servant has repeatedly said that it is by choice. We have to make a choice. Choice of being on the side of the Lord or not being on the side of the Lord. This day, Lord, we deliberately, we intentionally, Father, surrender everything, whatever Lord that has made us Lord to be estranged before you, whatever Lord has made us Lord to be on our own without knowing or even knowingly, Father, this day we drop all of them. We accept Lord to be taught, we accept to be led, we accept to be guided, we accept Lord father to be shown the way we have not known it all there is somebody that has been commissioned commissioned to lead us commissioned to teach us commissioned to help us lord i remember that so many some years ago over 15 years ago you told me somebody that i must listen to your servant if i must not go to hell I was taken to hell, guided by his voice, and shown hell. And then the same voice of your servant guiding me to heaven. Along the way, there was a distraction, and I woke up. And last year, you, two years ago, you made me to know that if I must not miss heaven, I must not allow distraction of any kind to distract me from listening to his voice. Therefore, everlasting Father, Lord, I pray that you forgive us, Lord, all the things we have imported into the church, all the strange fire, all the trying to be on our own and lead ourselves, Lord, as we have no leader. Father, we repent of that. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we surrender our will, we surrender our ways, we surrender whatever we think you know, we know. At the feet of the Lord, we accept to be discipled. We accept to be guided. We accept to be taught. Father, we accept that there is an Abraham. And if we must not regret at the end of our lives, we must remain attached to him. Whatever, Lord, that the devils have designed, that he wants to use to detach us, he wants to use to separate us, in that direct separation or indirect separation, Father, we're asking that you take them out of our ways. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed Father, we thank you for your servant. We thank you because of the truth he has unveiled. We ask you to continue keeping him for us. Continue feeling him that when we come back again this evening, as he will guide us, Lord, on who is on the side of the vision and who is on the side of the visioner. Lord, speak to us more. Help us to discover ourselves. Help us not, not to look on another person. Help us to be selfish this afternoon in the sense that we are conscious of discovering where we have uh, offended, where we have missed the way. We bless you, our Father, for answer to prayer. We ask you to continue strengthening him. We also pray, Lord, that you strengthen us also so that we will continue listening and meditating on your word. We bless you, Spirit of the living God, for what you have taught and what you are still going to teach. Be exalted in our lives. We put our hands in your hands. We know, Lord, that since you've elected to help us, you will continue helping us, Lord, until, until this work is finished, until we deliver. We give you thanks and praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.